Olá a todos, bem-vindos ao segundo episódio da nova temporada, a sexta temporada do Prova de Contacto. Desta vez já estou aqui com o Ruben. Olá, olá. olá. Do lado de certo da barricada. É, okay. certo. Para quem não ouviu o primeiro episódio, não vai perceber esta piada, mas para quem ouviu, já sabe o que é que eu estou a falar. Hashtag, Isso... partilhem o Ruben, não é? é exatamente, <risos> vai ser trend, esse, esse hashtag vai ser trend. Um, e estamos aqui para mais episódio e a primeira surpresa é que este episódio vai ser com um convidado internacional. É okay. verdade. É uma das surpresas e também já podemos aqui fazer um pequeno anúncio, Ruben, não é? Sim, este, este episódio vai ser uh, uma ótima parceria que desenvolvemos com, com a Leica Portugal, por isso vamos ter aqui alguns convidados que vão, que vão passar por Portugal, alguns convidados internacionais e alguns nacionais e esperemos que todos vós gostem das surpresas que vamos trazer durante este ano. É verdade. E para começar, vamos ter então aqui um fotógrafo que o Ruben já vai passar a apresentar, que vai estar brevemente a expor na loja da Leica no Porto, Sim. mas já vão saber quem é que o Ruben já vai dizer. Força Ruben. Temos, a, temos a só que fazer já um, um, um primeiro aviso, que contem já que esta entrevista vai ser toda em inglês, por isso ah, sim. eu acho que sim. Da, tanto da minha parte como do João Paulo pedimos já desculpa pelo nosso inglês macarrónico. <risos> sim, o nosso inglês Zé da Camarinha. Sim, um bocadinho. Não, não tanto, não tanto. Não tanto? Não, pronto, está bem. Okay. Uh, mas pronto, fica o alerta feito, vai ser em inglês. Mas se quem nos tiver a ouvir, se não tiver muito à vontade com o inglês, uh, nós recomendamos então que ouçam este episódio no nosso canal do YouTube, não é? Uh, para quem não sabe, é procurar no YouTube Prova de Contacto Podcast e ativar a legendagem automática. E esperemos que as legendas que sejam devidamente até... bem feitas. Até resulte, sim. Sim, mas pronto, mas fica já feito este alerta, ok, malta? Então, vamos então aqui para a bio. Então, hoje vamos receber o Kit Yang, nascido em 84, que iniciou a sua jornada fotográfica em 2009, quando se mudou para a França e passou a integrar um grupo de fotógrafos em Paris, liderado por Gerard de Moulin. Desde o seu regresso ao Reino Unido, que tem dedicado grande parte do seu trabalho a captar as paisagens da região de East Anglia, onde ele vive atualmente. Ele é profundamente inspirado pela beleza e pela imponência das paisagens áridas e dos céus vastos que caracterizam essa região. As suas fotografias são o resultado de uma maestria única nas técnicas de revelação, fruto de inconsistáveis horas de trabalho solitário no escuro, onde se dedica a aperfeiçoar cada imagem com um cuidado meticuloso. Nas suas próprias palavras, o Kit explica que considera-se tanto fotógrafo como impressor, e ele faz, ele salienta muito esta distinção. Ele diz que, diz que não apenas tiro fotografias, também as crio. O fotógrafo para mim é responsivo, impulsivo, reagindo ao que aparece diante de mim de forma espontânea, muitas vezes focado apenas nas linhas e nos tons das cenas. Já o impressor em mim é metódico, exigente e sempre a trabalhar de forma mais meditativa. Uh, por isso, uh, vamos, sem mais demoras, uh, dar as boas-vindas ao Kit. Hello, Kit. Welcome Hello, to our Kit. podcast. And Hello. Thank you for accepting the invitation for this talk. No, thank you very much for having me. It's, it's great to be here and, and a big hello to all your listeners as well. So we usually begin our talks with a specific question which that our regular audience already knows. So tell us, how did photography came to your life? How did it all begin? Wow. Um, <laughs> in, in several stages, I suppose. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was perhaps 10, 9, 10 years old, uh, on a Saturday morning, I would go to uh, kind of an art club thing uh, where, in the town where I lived. Hmm. Um, and as part of that, we would sort of spend, uh, uh, a couple of weeks doing, you know, some pottery, a couple of weeks doing some, maybe some oil painting, uh, a couple of weeks looking at kind of graphic design. And then I had a couple of weeks, uh, cause you're, you're talking now probably 30 years ago, uh, in a dark room. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it kind of that was my first uh, experience uh, in the dark with red light, uh, working with negatives, um, sloshing chemicals around. Uh, and that kind of stuck with me, really. Um, mm. I, I didn't actually do much with it after that, but that was my first experience. And I think probably you guys know as well and, and, and your listeners that that first experience you have in a, yeah. in a dark room when yes. you see the image come it's come magic the, it's magic exactly <laughs> so it, that kind of it that that marks everybody who who sees that i think um and so that was my first experience and then i guess i there was there was other times where i sort of dipped back into it and i would have a film camera 
hmm. uh, and I would shoot some negatives, maybe maybe sort of aged uh, 13, 14, but nothing nothing significant. You know, I, I don't even know if those negatives exist. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's uh, that was kind of another experience I had. And then I guess the the the, the kind of well, it must have been it must have been about the the, the kind of um, introduction of all the kind of uh, yeah the introduction of kind of digital photography um oh. and that really got me back into photography actually because the the dark room's great and shooting neg- negatives is great but it's expensive it, you know you need you need you need a place to develop it you need a place mm-hmm. to so actually digital photography was great you know suddenly all of a sudden you could have a camera and you could see the images on your computer in the evening I mean, it was kind of <laughs> genius really um so that was when I was kind of at university. Uh, I had a Nikon D something or other, maybe a D80 or D90. I can't remember okay. what the model, but that was great. So I I took, uh, you know, thousands of photographs uh, of, oh, I guess in hindsight, it was mo- mostly rubbish, but <laughs> it's uh, it kind of allowed me to get back into it. Um, yeah. and, and I developed this kind of fascination in, in images uh, and taking photographs, you know, framing things. Uh, framing subject matter uh so purely the kind of you know the clicking of the button i guess you would call it the anything post process i i never understood um at that time um and i kind of played with that for a couple of years and then i then i thought you know uh it would be nice if i could uh, maybe get a film camera again because i quite liked the the dark room um the the negatives and at the university at the time they they had a, a, a photography society there hmm. and they had a couple of dark rooms. So I kind of thought, you know, I'm here, let's give it a go. Um, and that's when I kind of dipped back into it properly. Um, and after a while I found myself kind of um, teaching, I think I, I think I had a hundred students at the university um, wow. <laughs> and I was teaching them how to develop a, uh a negative um or how to develop film how to you know how to how to make a print and i i actually don't know how i did it because i think the dark room was <laughs> the dark room was tiny I, I think you could only get kind of three or four people in there and even that was a squeeze so you sort of had to push past people to get to the trays and yeah but anyway how we, many, we did how many enlargers uh, just one maybe no what's that sorry one enlarger one there were two uh there were two yeah. There were two, okay. yeah. I think there were two in each room actually, and there were two dark rooms. So that's four enlargers. I mean, the problem is if 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 you if the person next to you exposed the paper while yeah. you were while you were trying to expose yours, you kind of it was just a mess. There was no dividing yeah. screen or anything, and you know the place was an absolute uh, was a was an absolute mess. But I mean, it kind of it, it gave me that uh, that kind of. Uh, feeling that that you know there's something here and and so anyway I sold all the the digital stuff that I had and which was great you know it was it was it was fun while it lasted and then I I uh you know stupidly bought a I think it was a Leica no it was a Besser a Voigtlander Besser ah, camera yeah um and I but somebody told me it's like a Leica so I kind <laughs> of I kind of uh believed them and I'd had a go with it and I thought it's not like a Leica really and nope <laughs> and and it's great, you know, it's a great tool. Um, I also had a, I think on the camera was a, was a Russian lens and it, you know, any straight line, it made one key and it was oh. all very, which <laughs> the, the way I like to do photographs, especially urban stuff, like the, the lines being straight is often quite, quite important. But um, so I, I, I got rid of that and then I really stupidly, foolishly bought a Leica M3 for, you know, I think it was 400 euros or 400 pounds. Wow. With with a lens, you know, with a Leica Good lens. Good luck trying to find another yeah. one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think if I sell that camera now, I'm a, I'm a rich man. <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. sell it because it's it's too special. With that, yeah, yes. that camera then sort of that was you know that was just the the start of it all really. Um, <laughs> as it as it is, when you have a camera like that, you you uh, it just allows you allows you to approach something in a completely different way the the you know taking pictures framing um you know always having your eye on the subject and and that Mm -hmm. kind of just it snowballed really and it just became this kind of yeah I just couldn't stop taking pictures um 
but then uh, my wife and I moved to moved to France um, after our studies, um, and she was she was uh, working up in Normandy, in the north of France, and I joined her there, and I had uh, I think I had uh, I had four months to find some work, uh, otherwise I had to go back to England. So I, in between looking for jobs and uh, uh, and such, I I was ta- always taking pictures, um, and that's when I really started to kind of create my, my work, I think, you know, um, which would have been, I guess that could have been 2008. Um, and then in 2009, we, we moved from, from Normandy to Paris. And that's, that was the kind of the, the key decisive turning point for me was, uh, was in Paris. I had a, I guess it was a chance, chance encounter really with a, with a man um, who well, photographer uh, who was also um, leading a kind of a club mm-hmm. uh, in the Paris region, uh, and his name's uh, Gérard Moulin. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I guess, yeah, meeting him and uh, joining this club, and I and I, I think it's important to say that um, I don't know about you guys in, in Portugal, but photo clubs in the UK have this kind of um, I don't know. They're kind of understood to be these places where people talk about uh, gear and and yes. there's not really much else. But which isn't necessarily true. It's it's kind of a you know it's kind of a you know it's it's not necessarily a truth. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are places where they where they do do that, but uh, there are others where where they don't. But anyway, um, so I joined the the hit the club with here, which he was running in in Versailles. Um, and basically that that was the it was either the beginning or the end i don't know <laughs> it depends how you want to how you want to look at it but that's where i i i he 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 basically in a roundabout way obviously i was part of the club and, and presenting work and we were talking mm. a lot about the f- more philosophical aspects of photography and it didn't matter how the image was made basically the, that was the least important thing whether it was digital okay. or film nobody cared and it was great it was it was more about you know what you were able to say with your photographs with the way you you could see the world um and you know i think you have the same word in 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 portuguese because uh it exists in french at least but there's this word which i which in french is uh auteur mm-hmm. and if you translate that into english it's author which oh, yes, yes. which doesn't really have any it doesn't really have any um meaning in english other than maybe you, you're a writer or something you know but applied to photography is this idea that you are you know you're in charge of the the work you make and it's it's yours kind of thing and and you you have a, a vision that you want to show and share um so i kind of it was jar who, who who taught me all these things in addition to uh subsequently giving me a key to his dark room <laughs> which was which was fantastic i mean it was i i was using the the club's uh dark room at the time because the the, the club there in versailles had their own dark room and I, I would kind of get there do a for an eight hour session you know um clean everything because you always have to start clean in the dark room if you don't it's just <laughs> there's no point trying you know you have to everything has to be in its place everything has yes. to be no dust no dirt all the trays have to be clean no contamination um especially these days, given the, the cost of materials. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 so I did that and I do my, my printing session. I'd share the work with the group and, you know, they would tell us, you know, you've got a, a, a way of seeing things which we like, uh, you know, your printing's terrible, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, that print is absolutely awful, but the photograph is great, you know, the, 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 the structure. So I guess that was my that was my, kind of my introduction to this idea that a photographer is not somebody who just presses a button, you know. Okay. Or, well, they can be, but you know, maybe there's more to it than that. And there's a. It there's has a second, to. It has to be. We're, we're there has to be. Yeah, and there, there's a second part. We're creators, comes, right? Yeah, exactly. And and whether you're in you're in Lightroom or Photoshop or you're you're stood in a dark room, sloshing chemicals around in trays, it's it, it's that second part is actually very important, you know. Hmm. Um. So anyhow, anyhow, I would I would use this this facility, this dark room at the club, and uh, 
then I would go back the next week and the place would be an absolute mess again. Somebody else had been in there. And, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they had a party in there. Or, you know, there was, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just it was a mess. So I'd spend two hours cleaning it all. And and I, and as as the weeks went by, I kind of told the, the, the group this, you know, I said, oh, I'm getting a bit fed up with that place. I don't know who's using it, but there's, there's somebody, somebody leaving it in a mess or people leaving it in a mess. So anyway, they, they um, sympathized and uh, it was maybe a week or so after that, Gerard uh, said, you know, my, my dark room's in Paris. Uh, here's a key. You, you let me know when you want to use it and it's yours. Uh, and I mean, that was that was kind of uh, I don't know if that was the beginning or the end. either. But it was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of uh, you know, it was amazing. He, he had a he had a, a dark room uh it was kind of high up in a in a in a building mm-hmm. um you know all all of the well in, in fact my dark room here in in norfolk is is practically the same as his i've got the same the same enlarger the same uh easel the same i try and try to recreate it here you mm-hmm. know because I, I just uh, got on with it so well um but but his dark room was fantastic because after a printing session you know i'd be, I'd be in there maybe 10 hours uh, and I would then open the balcony window doors, you know, and you'd open them up and you'd see the Eiffel Tower, Wow! <laughs> which if you timed it right and, and it was doing, it had its lights on and it was all flashing, you know, it's just, it, I, well, the first time I did it, I didn't know it with the Eiffel Tower, you could even see the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> you know, and it was just, um, just fast, you know, fantastic opportunity for me that, um, and then obviously in tandem with me using his dark room, I would then sort of, uh, drop drop by his place and with boxes of prints and uh you know we'd spend hours and hours and hours looking at work and uh explain he would explain things and sort of maybe say what's working what what needs some mm-hmm. work so it it turned in basically from this key into a i mean i i say a mentor it, it sounds very i always think that sounds very formal in english but it's it was kind of a it's a friendship um and he 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 shared you know all his knowledge which was oh he still does you know if we we talk we we talk about things and uh, it's just great it's a great friendship um, but that for me was was where it all got very real I suppose and that's I I, I say meeting Jao was was when I uh, yeah when I, when I started doing photography properly as it were <laughs> it, it changed the way you you were seeing your images right. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, he would he, he really really interesting with with the club as well. You know, you he would say, right, we're going to do a we'll do a project, hmm. and you know, I I didn't know what a project was. I, I don't know if I still know what a project is, but <laughs> you know, I would take photographs and I would put all the photos of dogs in that box, all of the photos of you know people in that box, all of the photos of trees in that box, and I would have my different boxes, and I you know you would never mix them. You know, I, I, I couldn't could never envisage that. But he he said, you know, we're going to do this um, 40 photo project, hmm. um, which I thought 40 photos. Crikey, that's you know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, but uh, the idea was basically to put together 40 images. And, you know, anyone can do this. This is the, the amazing thing. If you've got a kind of a, a pool of images and you pull hmm. kind of 40 out and you're trying to create something that works visually, not necessarily yeah. tell a story because although there were very good documentary shooters, you know, uh, in this group and they, they were, the, what they did was incredible and what people can do is, you know, is, is fascinating. But this was more, a, it was kind of a visual exercise, I guess. Um, and you, you had to put together this, this, this project of 40 photographs uh and that kind of opened my eyes. You know, I thought, well, I can put a tree next to a dog or I can put a, a human next to a landscape or mm. I can put, you know, it, there was no real rules. You know, he sort of said, that's, you know, that's fine. You know, and he, you can put portrait, you don't you know, portraits don't always have to be portraits together. And he sort of broke down all these um, kind of, I don't know what they were, kind of s- stereotype views I had of photography, a, of, of yeah. things being classified, you know, or. I don't know if you guys can kind of relate to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, it's always an issue while creating a, a sequence. People tend to uh, 
think of th- creating a sequence is the same as creating a narrative. Yeah. And no. I think this is what you were, were, were talking about. We, we yeah. can create a sequence of images that flow from start to finish and you can exactly. create a narrative, a narrative, you can create a story. So those two things don't have to go hand in hand, but exactly. sometimes they do. Exactly. No, no, it's, it's fascinating. And obviously, uh, this, the, what I'm saying is just, it's just my view of photography and there's, there's mm. for, fortunately there, <laughs> there are many ways to approach it, but it was just having my eyes open to this, um, this way of, of approaching mm. it, you know, which, which seemed to be, um, which I liked, you know, cause I, I, I didn't necessarily have to have a, um, how can I put it like a story or a, I, I, you know, I've tried documentary work and it, mm-hmm. you know, it's fascinating, but it's not really for me. I, I kind of need something a bit looser, um, which I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad. It's, how, how, did, uh, how did you came about finding the, the themes that you explore in your work? So you're, well, you're speaking about starting to mixture images and is that how you found some of the themes that you were more uh, enthusiastic about? So that's a that's a great question actually um i i what i think what what happened was that i would because i had no um no kind of i want to say goal um hmm. because i didn't have to have you know do this project on this thing and have 10 images and yeah, yeah. you know like have a brief and having a brief can be great don't get me wrong um it can be better than not knowing what you're doing which is in my <laughs> case is <laughs> is can be a nightmare you know you can go on trips and come back empty-handed but um <laughs> i i guess what it what it was is i i i developed and it, this is through gerard you know this is very much his philosophy um as as well as, as other people other friends other people i know but is this philosophy basically as a uh a photographer is somebody who walks essentially with a with a tool mm-hmm. and it's all down to what you cross, uh, how you, wh- how, you know, how you photograph it, what you see. Um, so I d- developed this, I, I guess it, you know, it, it sounds very grand, but kind of a, a very subconscious way of working, um, which mm-hmm. essentially means, you know, we, we three can go for a walk, you know, now, uh, if we're in Porto and, you know, in a couple of weeks time and we can, each have a camera around our neck and we, we, we can walk together. And if we only photograph the things that interest us, mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure even if we, inter- even if we're interested in the same thing, uh, we will not photograph it in the same way. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> and totally. it's, yeah. So it's, it was, the, I don't know if there's necessarily themes in my work. I mean, I, I see kind of two distinct things in my work and that would be, you know, there's, there's kind of the urban work, uh, mm-hmm. which is, reliant on cities, people, uh, concrete, iron, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, well, yeah, rel- reliant on, on, on the, on cities and people, I would say, um, or lack of people in some, some cases, but <laughs> you've got that side to it. And then you've got the, I've got the kind of lands landscape mm. side, but I guess, uh, which I, I'm still classifying them as two things, and I shouldn't because the, the show in Porto, will, <laughs> people who go and see it, they'll see it's it's all mixed together, um, mm. and that is I, I really think that's how my work needs to be seen. It, it doesn't shouldn't really be one or the other. They should be they should be mm. together, you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, the thing that unites both of those things is is really walking, uh, and the landscape work often is. If it's made locally, I'm walking with my family, so mm-hmm. I've got two two children, uh, and you know they they will lead me to the to the most interesting <laughs> things. They're, they're guaranteed they have a, an ability to seek out, you okay. know, uh, a, a stretch of river, uh, and 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 I just you know I've got my camera and I'm I'm there with them, so it's uh, they kind of show me things, you know. <laughs> You're there in the child's minds. <laughs> That's it. No, they you know they they're completely uninhibited they're, they're you know they're seeing things completely through their through a pure kind of filter you know which i guess mm-hmm. is you know it's the the goal of photography really is to you know try and try and show something that's that's there but people don't necessarily see you know um but i mean in terms of themes it's yeah i guess i 
I guess how I developed them was through walking. If that's if that's not a stupid a stupid answer. <laughs> um, I was wondering if if you ever tried any other themes or any other kinds of photography, so like sports yeah. or architecture. Did so you have a period where you, I'm going to try this and this and this and see if anything clicks. Exactly. Yeah. So when I was. Um... When I was working in this uh, with this group in Paris, when I met Gérard, there were these amazing documentary photographers, and I kind of thought, I, you know, I could do that, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> Stupidly, I thought that. So I kind of I would attend um, in Paris. There's a festival for the uh, is it Ganesha? I think in 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 English, the the elephant god. Yeah. Um, celebrated uh, there in Paris, and there's a huge festival, and there's people throwing coconuts and uh, <laughs> you know, people it's just a great street kind of festival so I, I went there a few times and uh, took um, took my camera took my Leica with a 35 mil lens and some tri -X. so you know you can't get more documentary than that can you it's kind of, <laughs> kind of it's kind of the classic classic combination and I yeah. I did it uh, Very and French. <laughs> yeah 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 and and I shot you know I shot lots of film and and I made I made some amazing prints and you know I was showing them to Jar and he said you know this is great you know you know uh, it's it's you know fantastic you're showing these views you know the, the prints are looking nice and he said but you know what do you think and I said you know and I kind of clicked and I thought it's Oh. it's it's not really for me I was I mean apart from the else documentary photography is really tiring um you, you've got this <laughs> you've got this huge pressure on you to to get the work you know yeah which I don't know I I it struggled you know I struggled with it and it, I, if I look back at the photographs now I would say you know quite honestly probably all of the photographs are not interesting um <laughs> <laughs> from, do, do you I say that just because you, you don't see yourself in those images yeah maybe that's it and i i think if if i was to see you know if you guys because you guys both do document photography right yeah 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 so if i'm sure if you if you were both to go there and show me the work i'd probably you know i'd, I'd for sure be be interested and fascinated you know it's mm. i don't know it's um it's one of those things isn't it i i think you can only ever make the work that you're you want to make i think you know hmm. i'm not sure if there's much the heart is not there <laughs> yeah yeah if if yeah if your heart's not in it then I, i don't know it's you can you can try your hand at stuff i mean i've tried uh wedding photography too um and I, o almost from a documentary mm -hmm. kind of and it's it's just not for me i mean it's um i don't know it's one of those things isn't it you <laughs> <laughs> you have to do what you have to do but i i, I think yeah. the, the only photography worth doing is the, is the one that that you do that that and whatever that is you know it doesn't have to necessarily have a label of x y and z it can be uh, a mixture yeah. of things um so i don't know it's uh yeah tough question that to be honest <laughs> no i i keep reminding the gary and the grants phrases when people start calling him a street photographer and he kept saying i'm not a street photographer i'm a yeah. photographer yeah yeah i yeah i think i'm a discreet photographer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good sign i think i think that's what i'd like to yeah labels labels are funny i yeah i think these days because obviously i'm i'm t you know if you look at the the what i've got some books here next to me of, of my stuff just so i don't forget what my work looks like but it's um <laughs> You know, a lot of it happens, you know, the street is the, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in a lot of cases photographing the street, but literally the street, um, mm. not necessarily as a, as a concept of, of humanist photography, but it's, um, <clears throat> I, 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 yeah, people have said, are you, you know, are you a street photographer? And I've kind of, I've been quite defensive about it in the past and I'd say, <laughs> no, 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 I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a window photographer. I'm, I'm an umbrella <laughs> photographer. I'm a tree photographer. I'm a, a sign photographer. I'm a, so I, I kind of, you know, in jest, try and avoid it. But it's, I guess these days with, there's just been this huge surge in, in street photography. Mm -hmm. and by that, I mean, kind of, I guess, you'd, what would you call it? Like the New York style, Bruce Gilden. Um, well, there's loads of people who've done it, isn't there? Let's face it. Most photographers yes. have, have have taken but it, i guess it's just it, this photography that's always been there has been given this label and i'm not mm -hmm. sure the label's necessarily um 
how can I put it, um, broad enough to encompass exactly the, the extent I, I believe this is more more of a, a transition or yeah or merge with other styles i think photography is the best term people keep yeah. putting labels on things and just it's starting to piss me off a little bit yeah. because <laughs> i also get a bit defensive because i like to do street work but sometimes i do like to do some urban landscape so i, I like yeah. to mixture things so it doesn't have to be just this term that has to define everything. So no, exactly. I, I think also it's, exactly, and I think it's also people's expectations when they hear that street, yeah, and they kind of think, you know, and maybe my work, you know, if I say street, I'm a street photographer. People probably look at it and think, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, there's not there's not much going on. <laughs> but um, yeah, labels labels are funny. I guess it's. Um, but you know, you, it's part of language. You need you need words to be able to yeah. understand and describe things. But it's yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I yeah. If I if I could have it, if I could be known as a discreet photographer, I'd, I'd quite like that because it sounds like street, but it's uh, not entirely. Uh, Let's register that one and <laughs> hope, hope it picks up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so know, let, but... let me ask you this: when I, when I start seeing your work, it it. Seem the mixture of an influence by many photographers, some Brassai, some Cartes. Looks yeah. sometimes a cinematic flanery that John Goodman introduced to the world in the late thirties. Some kind of a noir photography. Would that be fair to say? What, yeah, what appeals you know, to this style of image? I, I honestly, uh, yeah, I think all of the above. It's, um, it's all filtered down. All these things. All these, you know. Um, I guess if I if if you were to ask me my my um my favorite photographers I hmm. th there's two I you know there's two my my favorites there's um there's Curtez or Curtesh I don't know how you pronounce his name properly but Andre Curtez yeah um and another guy who lived in Paris who you know just one of the best the best of the best uh Lou, Louis Stettner um and I think both of those photographers, you know, they, they, if you, you know, if, uh, if you look at their work, it's, it's so broad, it's not, it's not one thing, you know, mm -hmm. they've got portraits, they've got work in urban environments, they've got landscapes, they've got, you know, they've got everything still yeah. lives, there's, there's everything there. And, um, you know, photographers like that is just, yeah, they're, they're very inspiring for me, but it's, I, I think, inevitably when you're when you're dealing with a visual language um you know whatever you look at whatever you're interested in it you, you can't really control how it comes <laughs> comes out mm -hmm. the other end so it's all these things do filter down you know um all these influences and i think the list that you provided i, I you know i think that's uh spot on really because um, I, I i i see it with some very dark contrasts and it's not very common to see it, especially in Europe, because that's more of a kind of a Japanese, more Asian style, I'd say. Yeah, and yeah, then, that's true. Then there's the 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 images that were introduced during the 1930s in maybe Chicago, because due to the um, German cinematographers that came yes. during yes. the war, and I, I see that influence in your work. So why would you choose this kind of image more more dark? Is it because of this influence, or is uh, it something that you really like to do with the play with the, the games with the shadows and the yeah, dark so, tones? No, that's a good, that's a great question. There's so I guess you you know there, there's people there have been people in the past. You know you've got the likes of Bill Brandt, who's another who's mm -hmm. another fantastic photographer. Um, and then obviously you, you mentioned the the kind of Chicago school. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and I mean, for me, that 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 <laughs> you know, all those photographers are are something else. It's uh, incredible, incredible bodies of work. But I think specifically for me, um, I, I guess it can it can sit it can sit uh, quite difficultly with people when you when you're dealing with something like silver gelatin prints, where you know you have these endless gradations of grey, you know, and you can have all this silver and um, and tonality um, to to want to kind of 
show yeah show a more contrastive view it can it, it's something people can struggle with i guess but i mm. i honestly think it's just the way that i like to uh approach the subject matter particularly for 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 well for urban work and for for landscape yeah. work you know it's it provides a means of kind of being able to emphasize uh certain aspects it makes almost the images I don't like the word graphic. I've never liked it, but there's this idea of of a more graphic view um, of the image. It becomes more two D, more more about shapes, more about lines, more about distributions of tone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I think if you if you kind of work in the extremes of that, so if you're you know maybe if you're you're working as I do in a, in a contrastier kind of way, it's it just provides a way of, of, of kind of exploring those, those kinds of things, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also, you know, silver gelatin is, is fantastic for, for doing, um, for making contrasty, contrasty work, um, work where the grain perhaps plays, um, a more prominent role and it should, okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's the kind of organic structure there with, with, with the highlights in my work, I like to have this um, this organic structure in there with this um, this kind of peppery tone. You know, it's it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of a it, then it becomes a almost a, the photograph. It becomes more about an object than a than an image. You know, right. Yes. So, which I you know that applies to any any photograph. You know, photographs need to be printed. They need to be made into True. physical yeah. things. Yeah. But for me, working in the dark room, that's it's kind of a tonality thing and it's to do with the materials there's a there's a kind of um there's a magic which i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> but it's what keeps me working and that magic is uh i say magic's probably not the best word but there's a lot of uh unknown in the dark room which is locked up yeah. in the materials that are used you know um, yeah, the, and, and there's the unexpected something Oh yeah. Sometimes yeah, goes yeah. wrong and you get something new. Something yeah, the, different. the mistakes are the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you accidentally expose a print twice and you think, oh actually <laughs> that looks all right. Um yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, it's it's also I think just finding it's for me it's to do with finding a way of working which which I feel comfortable with, that, that I think that I yeah, that I feel comfortable with and that, that suits that suits what I'm showing. Um I, you know, I don't think overnight you'd see me changing my approach um, because there's, you know, there's so much to explore with mm-hmm. with the parameters I've set, which are which are pretty limited, to be honest. You know, film, film, you know, uh, high acuteness developer, um, dark room work, <laughs> generally a grade, a grade four or five. So it's, mm. you know, just just with that alone, I mean, you you once you've set those kind of parameters you 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 you're free really i think to do whatever you want um but it's true yeah the i guess the work is is darker i'm i'm trying with the landscape work to try and um explore a kind of lighter side still mm. still keeping the contrast there but with maybe with less with less of a heavy darkness which which you'll see you'll see in porter there'll be a, a few prints um which explore that, which, you know, it's, it's all very interesting. I mean, it's, but, it, but you can put that work next to the, 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 the darker work and it, they kind of, uh, you know, they work together. It's, uh, it's very interesting to, to see actually. Um, in an interview some years ago, you've mentioned that taking photographs and printing photographs are two very different skills. Uh, what can you learn on each side to improve on the other? Well, if you were to ask the printer, the the photographer is absolutely incapable of taking a a decent exposed <laughs> <laughs> image. And if you were to ask the photographer, he he really doesn't care too much what the printer thinks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, no, it's it's really fascinating. I I think you know with things like with things like Photoshop and Lightroom, the fact that you can um, you know, attack a, a file from a, from a, any way, you know, you can, you can really go for things without necessarily needing the, 
I, I'd say expertise. I'm I'm far from being a, I would say a an expert in the dark room. I, I think I can I can produce the work I want, but I'm not somebody. I'm not a. I don't like the word master master print or anything like that. That's mm. somebody who can who can work across the whole board. You know, they can mm. deal with large format. 35 mil medium format they can deal with anything they can find a solution to anything and there's plenty of uh printers out there you know all over the world who specialize in that and they are you know they're a godsend to many photographers Mm -hmm. yeah but i yeah i guess the there is a distinction in in my work where whereby you've got the the walking part and the part which really is to do with disengaging my brain um believing in what I see and what I feel and, and taking the image. Um, and then you've got the kind of more, uh, how would you explain it? Uh, I guess more, more of a considered, uh, side, which is the printer, you know, who is looking at more technical things, I guess, you know, looking at percentages, looking at, at how mm-hmm. tones correlate, looking at maybe an area is too dark and it, and it, and it throws the balance of the image off and, all, all these things that basically the photographer, I mean, if, if a photographer was dealing with all that while they were taking photographs there, I think mm-hmm. the head would explode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've been, you know, I've, I've spoken to a few friends about this kind of, um, this idea of pre-visualization. Um, yeah. And I, I think it probably does exist to an extent, um, okay. but not not far beyond, not, not much beyond a, a feeling in the gut, really. It's... Uh, I yeah I I I do honestly see it as two distinct activities. One's one's out trying to, you know, the photographer's trying to get the lines, the the shapes of things, the hmm. the um, the essence. I think was probably how I'd say it. And then also that the, you know the printer's trying to get the essence too. Um, yeah. But from a totally different perspective, it's more of a a scientific approach. Um, although you know, having said that, there's there is a lot of creativity in the dark room also, but it's, it sort of plays out in a different arena, in a different arena, really. It's uh, a different Perhaps an, it's an enhancement of the essence. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can't, you can't change an image. The, 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 the bare bones are, are what they are. Yeah. It's the, the, the negatives, the blueprint, but I, I honestly think that from that you can really affect the reading of an image or, the understanding of an image or perhaps you know uh, how an image will function in a series if you start um start playing with the the densities you know um if that's a way to explain it so you know in the dark room you you'd use very simple tools you know you use your hands and some light and you you <laughs> you add light or you subtract it that's all you do i mean it's a, it's very simple in a way and i I've said to people, you know, the basics of dark room printing, you can learn in, I can teach them in two hours. Yeah. You know, no problem. But <laughs> there's always a but. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, here I am. Uh, well, how many years on from, <laughs> from, from Paris? And I, I've just returned from Scotland with, um, with, what was it 165, 170 rolls of, rolls of film? <laughs> and I'm, I'm making the prints, and, and some of the prints are in the we're going to be in the show in Porto. There, uh, oh, great. so you'll you'll see that they'll for any of your listeners who who go, they'll see. Um, and I've had to, so I've had these landscapes from from Scotland, and I've had to find a new way of uh, hmm. de- not developing as such because the development developing film is very easy. You know, you, you could mm-hmm. you could give it to a monkey to do, but it's. Um, it's a way of uh, interpreting the light. Um, and I don't know why that is in Scotland. I don't know if it's because it's further north, um, More because foggy. it was winter. Just, yeah, 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 foggy, mist, mountains. Uh, there's lots of light. The light seems to fall very weirdly up there and in the most beautiful way, um, mm-hmm. but not like it does down here in Norfolk. It's, it's different again. So, you know, I, I, I think you've got the photographer who's taking the picture basically, and you've got, you've then need to have this, this second half of a brain, which is trying to <laughs> make the image, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, there are people that, you know, don't get me wrong. There's, there are people who are uh, made careers out of just pressing the button and letting somebody else deal with it. But I think when you've, when you're like me or like you guys, where you're, you're sort of shooting your work and you're processing it, you need to, 
you to try try and understand what's going on. Um, sure. Yeah. Are you the kind of photographer that brings the tripod or do you usually go all by hand? Well, you probably use it as a small kit, right? Yeah. So I, I, I use a tripod. I, uh, during lockdown, I, I got very into photographing here in Norfolk, the, the hmm. marshlands and rivers, um, the, the salt marshes up on the coast. Um, because obviously not being able to travel, uh, I just had to, to deal with what what I could local that's local to me that's nearby so I I got very into and am very into in a very obsessive way <laughs> <laughs> uh, photographing my my local environment but it's I I've, I've taken a I've taken a tripod uh, to do some of that work particularly working at night with the moon um, yeah with night night exposures um, maybe some long exposures I've tried my hand at some long exposures as well trying some things out but they're they're mainly i would say by and large i don't use a tripod uh mm. but i mean in scotland i had um i had my usual leica kit with me and then i'd have uh i had a nikon with a 600 mil wow. lens okay. which i was using for some of the images which obviously like is great for for kind of anything but i generally shooting 50 mm. on three five okay 90 maybe a bit of 35 maybe a bit bit of 28 but it's mainly the 50 area. Um, and I, well, you know, you stick a 600 mil <laughs> lens on a, on a Nikon body. It's uh, it suddenly becomes very heavy. I mean, I was trying to use uh, what I had as well, if there was a wall or something, but you, you need a, you need a tripod, but that's the tripod is not, it's not part of the approach. It's more just to try and get a semi sharp uh, image. So I would say probably, yeah, I use tripods, but not, not, all the time. I, I gotta ask you this because probably we're gonna get this question from uh, from our younger audience, which is <laughs> why black and white and not color? Why color? You know, <laughs> why color not black and white? <laughs> yeah, it's it's very interesting. I um, I've never I've actually never printed color in the dark room. Um, yeah, because that that has to be way think, harder than <laughs> yeah, black yeah, I and think, white. I think it's a lot more complicated, and I think maybe there's a lot more nuance involved. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of nuance involved in black and white photography too. You know, you can kill an image by overdoing something, but I think when you're only dealing with a gradation of one tone, in a way, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's easier. But color, I I think honestly, what it is, I, I I've shot um, I've shot some color film when I was in New York uh, for my honeymoon with my wife, and I. I just, I, I've shown a few people the, I, they've, I keep them very secret. <laughs> they're slides and I've it, kept them It's very just secret. not you, kid. <laughs> no, no. And I show people and they kind of go, what, what's, what were you thinking? You know, it's, 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 this is not normal. Um, Waste of the trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what do, do you know? Do you even know what color is? It's kind of, <laughs> um, it's, it's a completely different way of working, you know, um, it's, I, I, I actually tell people I'm colorblind, so I'm not, but it's just the easy <laughs> way out. Uh, or I say my camera doesn't accept color film. I, I, find, I find some way of, uh, of getting it's, it's around It's monochrome. It. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, I honestly think my, my work is, um, it kind of exists in the dark room, and it has to be. Yeah. It has to Where be you found red, yourself, right? Yeah, it has to be under a red light, and that's, yeah. that's my limit. That's my, my kind of boundary. And, and I honestly think, you know, once you've set a boundary and, I'm sure you guys are the same and your listeners, once you've set some sort of a boundary with your work, you know, you're, you're free, really. It's, um, mm. you, you can do what you like. It's, uh, it's endless, <laughs> supposedly <laughs> endless. The, the boxes of prints tell me, tell me that, but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's something you can explore for, for, a, for a very long time, I would imagine. Um, and, uh, Kit, in a world saturated with images like nowadays, how do you keep your work fresh and authentic? What challenges you do you face to maintain the, your originality? How do you keep original? Yeah, am I original? <laughs> I don't know if I'm original. Um, I think you know. I I would say probably my my approach is is um, is building on what's come before. You know, um, uh, what do they say? You know, you stand you stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but I. 
I don't know. I think I think the thing is just to with my work. If I if I'm curious in something with something, I'll, I'll try and see it through. You know, I'll try and mm. try and get into it. And whether that's going up to Scotland on my own with a with a with a car and a literally a boot full of cameras and film. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's quite comical, really. Oh, and some <laughs> apples, and some <laughs> apples, and uh, some bananas, and uh, some water. Um, you know, if if the urge is there to to find something, I, I think quite honestly you, you'll find it. And I, I I I've never really, yeah, I don't think I've ever tried to be original. I I, I don't know what original is to be honest. I, it, um, I guess the work the work just comes. You know, it's um it's one of those things. And certainly when you're in the in the moment, uh, and you're really you know you're walking around Paris or you're walking around uh, Venice or you're you're, mm. you're you're in the landscape you know i something something takes over and it and it kind of the work it just comes you know it's uh it's kind of a flow thing i i yeah it's that's a difficult question <laughs> it's um yeah it's it, it's it's similar to to a question we usually ask is how, how do you overcome creative blocks cuz not every day we're and our mindset to go and photograph, but we keep pushing, yeah. right? Exactly. So how, how do you usually overcome this? Okay, well, I, maybe I can um, kind of reassure your listeners by by saying that I rarely carry a camera. How about that? Okay. Should a, should a photographer say that? I don't know if they should. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can cut that bit out. No. Um, I yeah. When I when I'm taking photographs, I think I have to. I have to be there I, I can't oh, okay I kind of have to you know have to have the camera um I you know if I if I if I don't have a camera then I'm I'm not really I can't really do it I, I you know an image has to be committed to film and, and mm -hmm. then to paper for it to exist for me it's um it's kind of kind of one of those things but um <laughs> yeah it's uh it's yeah. gotta be hard for you when you find something you if I only had my camera here. Yeah. Did you know what though? I, I I used to get years and years ago. I'd get really really angry with myself, and and now I just say it's fine. I'm I'm owed a good, picture, <laughs> you know, and I'm very philosophical about it. I mean, I I, I think you know you, to go back to your question of how do you deal with a creative block. Um, I guess my way of dealing with it is not to carry a camera. <laughs> 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 but uh i think also when you when you're working you know like like i am and you're you you're shooting and then you're printing um those two activities they they they're you know they're they're linked they feed into each other they're they're kind of the same thing but they're they're distinct um and obviously when i'm when i've taken a photograph in scotland in uh when was i there february march and then i'm making a print you know, three weeks ago, um, I, I have, how can I put this? I, I've got the negatives now that I'm not taking pictures. I've got negatives to keep me yeah. creatively entertained, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I guess the shooting is, is a, is an aspect I love. Um, and it's, you know, it's often part of some kind of an adventure or trip or, or something, mm -hmm. but the, the printing is something that, you know, or, 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 you know, if you, if you're using, um, uh digital tools like photoshop you know you you can always uh you can always edit photos and and explore yeah. explore things that way so i guess there's this kind of there's a there's kind of a build up of i guess yeah tension for a for a trip to take images and and use my cameras and and get through lots of film and then there's there's this kind of uh time afterwards where where think the dust needs to settle you know things need to you mm -hmm. can't constantly be at things you've got to type type i always say to people time with, with photography time is actually on your side once you press that button yeah. you know you're 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 kind of in control um so i guess yeah to to kind of i i, I would spread spread work out um you know printing scotland's going to be a I guess it, I could be a year, a year doing that in total. Um, so while I'm not taking photographs necessarily, um, I'm doing other things. So, so besides the work of other photographers, where do you find the inspiration for your work? 
Because <laughs> those downtimes, you, you, you're probably reading or listening to music or speaking yeah, to someone. Or, yeah, or, or, or reading. I mean, the, the, the trip up to Scotland actually was, um, was a trip which was, uh, it came about, I've been wanting to go up to Scotland for, for, for many years just to see it, you know, because you have these images of these places in your mind and you think oh, that would be quite nice to see it. But I was, that trip came about because I was reading a, a book uh, by a nature writer, a British nature mm. writer, uh, who goes by the name of uh, Robert McFarlane. Um, and you know he's he's a he's a very interesting guy. He 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 will sort of explores his relationship through with the landscape through through walking, which you know mm. I kind of thought that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he he also has the, the very some very, some great books which I would I would recommend to your readers. I, you know I think they're definitely available in English, obviously, but I think they've been translated as well. I, um, whether they're translated into Portuguese, I'm unsure, but they're, they're just, um, there was kind of a, a, an excuse really to go. When I read that book, I thought, you know, I, I, what his books, I kind of thought, actually, I need to go and see this place for myself and, uh, and check it out. So I guess that, uh, yeah, somebody's books can be inspiration to send you off to, to explore something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, I, I, I think these days I'm, I'm maybe looking less at photography books. Um, and looking more elsewhere, um, which, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess it's, I guess it's both, but, um, with, with also with the, with the, the local work I was producing here in Norfolk, I was, um, asked by, uh, by two academics who, who, who live locally that they, they were writing a book about a local painter here called, um, John Crome. Hmm. This is kind of 18th century, I believe 17th, 18th century, um, who would paint the marshes here and uh, landscapes? Uh, and they were they contacted basically a um, uh, kind of a panel of local artists to what they what they wanted them to do essentially was to to look into his work, the painter's work, um, research it, you know, get acquainted with it, um, and then see how it would filter down into their work. So uh, hmm. you, you may have seen my website that. I, I, forget what I've called it now, Broad, uh, Broad, Broad and Marsh, I think, or Broads and Marsh. Um, that essentially is all the work I made from this, uh, this, this, this kind of exploration of this local painter. Um, I mean, it has really nothing to do with the, the local painter, really. It's, it's more, a, um, it's become its own thing. <laughs> <laughs> um i think now there's there's maybe there's maybe 350 prints in that series individual wow. prints so that just to give you an, an idea of um of the work i will make not necessarily show uh because i think if you okay. show everything it's, it's too much but i, I, uh, I have two questions because you, you keep saying all these numbers and <laughs> how do you choose what to exclude ah it's a very yeah, and, is... and and secondly, how, how how do you keep your archive? Because I I have to see what it looks like. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it it's a challenge. I what I've, I the way I I approach um, so just to answer that first part of the question. So how how to approach what to what to kind of print? Let's say is yeah. that I'll get back from a trip and I'll I'll take my contact sheet because I always mm -hmm. use contact sheets. I, I think contact sheets are. They're just the best thing a photographer can have, um, yes. and you know, and I that applies to digital photographers too. With the, with the uh, what do you the kind of thumbnail thing that you can do it on on yeah, you can do it on Photoshop. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So just to have that overview, because I I think it's in having that overview that you can sort of see your 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 sort of journey, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it? I'll take a take the contact sheet and I'll, I shall mark put just a line on each frame which I like yeah. the look of, and then I'll put the contact sheet away, uh, go onto a different contact sheet, do the same thing, and then I kind of let them let them mature, <laughs> let them rest, you know, um, and then I'll pick them out again and, and do another line on there. If maybe maybe it'll be the the same image or maybe it'll be a, a different frame, you know, or, or yeah. different different contact sheet. And I'll spend quite a long time doing that. So not all the time looking at them, but just on and off. 
Um, okay. And I've actually found with time, my my eye, the first frames my eye will pick are often they're very obvious images. You know, the the, the ones which people go, oh, that's really great. Um, that's something you know. Uh, well, the, the, with the with the Scotland work, certain landscapes which are very very uh, present, as it were. But as that process goes on, um, the the I wouldn't say more interesting, but I think that sort of less is kind of says the others are, are less interesting, but more subtle, subtle things come out of the images I pick. So it, it's very important because I, I, you know, when you're building work in series, you can't just have a, you know, I hate the word like a masterpiece and then a masterpiece <laughs> and then a masterpiece, you know, you, that's not how it works. You, it's like, it's like writing or, you know, like music. You yeah, can't yeah. just have, you've got to have, you've got to have a, a, a build up. You've got to have maybe images which are less strong, but perhaps they do a good mm -hmm. job in connecting ideas. Um, so that process can, it just takes, takes, takes a very long time and it should. Um, so that's how I go about choosing the images that I would like to print. And then obviously there's making the work and it then is archived in a box Mm. <laughs> and then maybe the world never sees it but that's <laughs> that's kind of actually the world the world doesn't see most of it because i as i say to people there's a lot of rubbish so you have to kind of <laughs> you kind of have to filter filter the bad things out you know but um and then in terms of archiving i use a very simple system which uh which gerard taught me and that is each each uh each year has a within it a number of folders so okay maybe so last year, there, year. Okay. okay yeah maybe, maybe last year there was i don't know i shot 300 rolls of film um and you know each uh each contact sheet in those folders i i tried to put them in there kind of chronologically so i can okay yeah. follow my thoughts if it's all over the shop i find it difficult to find things whereas if i know i've been on this trip and it was a photograph taken there, i can pretty much remember where i mm -hmm. was and uh, i can find things but so I, I, that's how I, and then the archiving is, um, is done like that. So the prints are made, they're, they're kind of, uh, put in, uh, archival boxes and, um, either they're shared, <laughs> they're shared <laughs> with the world on Instagram or on my website, or they, they go to galleries, but the most part they, they, nobody sees them, which is, <laughs> which is, which is probably for the best, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's uh, if that's the right way to do it, but that's that's kind of how I've how I've done it. It's it's just fine. I think you need to find it with archiving. You need to find a system that that works and uh, then just stick to it because it's, it's it, very it's, easy to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> very <Exactly>. badly. <laughs> so we we'll start talking about your exhibition here because we're talking about your work and some of it. Uh, the images will be in the exhibition. Hmm. Can you give us a sneak peek of what? Will expectors, will visitors will expect to see? Well, yes, I can give you a... I don't want to give too much away because there's going to... Magda, the, the curator, who's, you know, it's been an absolute um, joy working with her. She's really understood the work. Um, Magda, she's please had... forgive us. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> But she 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 really she really understood, understands my work. Um And we agreed on this uh, this kind of concept, and then um, we kind of worked around that. So, the, I guess the the show, in in general terms, the show is going to comprise forty something prints. Okay. I forget the exact number. Um, <clears throat> so smaller prints. So eleven by fourteen inch prints, okay. Um, okay. which are framed up to sixteen twenty. Ish, and then 1620 prints that are framed up to 20, 24 inch. Sorry, this is all in inches. It's an absolute nightmare. I, no worries. Weirdly, <laughs> it, I think it's because I work with galleries in America. I, I've adopted yeah. this inch system to talk about prints. But then if you were to ask me how how tall I am, I'll tell you in centimeters. It's really <laughs> <laughs> And I just think it's a mess in England anyway, because they've not, uh, they've not really chosen, or they have chosen, but it's just that everyone uses everything. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but so that... In in terms of the prints I make, I would say that they that the prints on show is going to be the biggest print I make and the next print down uh, in size that I make. So there's going to be no, as I would say, there's going to be no small prints. Um, okay. Right. But for me, a small print's twenty by 
25 and even that's not small they can go smaller mm -hmm. but so I, I think for for my work for darkroom work um yeah it's going to be big prints but probably most people who go would, would probably <laughs> think they're small but um so we, we've we've gone on this idea of um the, the, the exhibition's called uh reverie or reverie mm -hmm. which is this idea i mean it's an english english word but it's for french origin of this um this kind of daydream mm -hmm. um because we you know i've always been keen of exploring this this idea with with all photographs it doesn't necessarily have to be my work it can be any work but once you put that image on a wall uh and you invite people to engage with it you've you've kind of you've lost control um mm. and what i really wanted to explore this was was to be able to mix the the work from various places so you know there's going to be work from from paris uh the Isle of Skye in Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, Chicago, Venice, Italy, okay. uh, and some work from Norfolk too. There'll be, I think there's a landscape from Norfolk from the marshes. But um, the idea was to, to create this kind of, uh, I, what could you call it? Like a, like a, a, uh, a set of images, uh, an exhibition, a, a way of mm -hmm. approaching the work, which, which essentially hopefully people when they get to the end they'll think what what have i just looked at I, you know, they, they'll, they'll hopefully have got a bit lost in there um and kind of appropriated maybe this dream this dream concept um of looking at work and maybe jumping from from left to right up and down because right. the, the the exhibition isn't necessarily going to be a left to right you know one image one image one well, there's going to be some something in there which which will be revealed on the day mm -hmm. <laughs> uh where you know actually the, the the viewer will be creating these um will be connecting images and creating um creating their own thought you know it will be mm -hmm. it, it would be really interesting um <laughs> hopefully so that's some, somewhat, somewhat open to interpretation right yes so it's this idea essentially that uh, that as a photographer i think you 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 take an image but the image can exist outside of that and mm. And that, that's what we're exploring this this concept of 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 a, of a daydream, which it would be nice. It would be good to to get people at the end, and they they kind of feel like they've been in a bit of a daydream after looking at the images. Maybe jumping from a from a cityscape to a you know a street in Paris to a to a landscape in Scotland to a hope. That's the idea. Anyway, we'll uh, fingers crossed it works. <laughs> it will. It will. Yeah. But it's, but we know that. There's also planned a workshop, right? Yes. What can people expect from your workshop? Well, uh, so the workshop will be will be a one day workshop um, at the Leica Academy. Um, I think Sunday twenty ninth. Exactly. Yeah, twenty yeah. ninth is it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, the that's right. Op the opening is on the twenty eighth. And... Exactly. So that's Saturday. So we have the opening on Saturday, yeah. and then the next day we are going to meet back at the the, the Leica Academy, and I think the the workshop's going to be a is it one hundred and fifty euros, and it will run from the morning. Magda's got all the the exact times. I'm pretty bad with all these things, but I think it it will essentially run from ten till five. Um, so it's going to be quite a, a decent length you know um or half nine till five i can't remember the exact times but uh, essentially it's the best part of a day um and what i wanted to explore was this the idea of making kind of series based work and, and how to go about it um maybe also talk a bit about how i approach you know um, uh, the urban work and the landscape work um mm. For the time being, I'm I'm still kind of working on it all right now, but it, it'll all be ready in time. But there's what I wanted to do. I mean, the the logical solution would be to have a go on a photo walk, take right. loads of photos, and then kind of look at how to arrange them and put them together. But I what I wanted to do actually was was kind of turn it round on its head. So to explore the uh, the kind of ins and outs of how to do things, and maybe give give kind of attendees ideas of how of, of maybe how mm -hmm. to approach a city because photographing in a city is, if, if you if you don't know what to do it's um it's daunting you know <laughs> so i thought maybe by sharing my work by talking about uh 
how I've approached projects, how I've maybe put together the, the latest uh, book that I've made and kind of picking things apart. And, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll have some images that will be either torn out of books or uh, <laughs> my, my books or, uh, or kind of put out on the floor on tables. And we'll look at how sequencing can change yeah and change a perception of of something and how it how how you can create this this kind of this yeah visual visual narrative i guess you know so we'll, we'll do that in the morning and then after we've done all that so after we've looked at all the the theory as it were we will go on a walk around porto um which will be which will be great you know and i'll, I'll maybe We'll, we'll walk around and maybe we'll, we'll 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 look at ways of approaching subjects you know if people are don't know how to approach a certain subject or they feel that they're kind of in the way or they're they're scared or you know all these things can be we can talk about them and, mm -hmm. and i can sort of offer the way you know the ways that i talk about the ways i deal with things i guess it's um it's going to be yeah the 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 morning's going to be very hands-on and then the afternoon really is going to be hopefully I, I just want the participants to go home with uh, lots of work. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That, that's the idea. Um, so, the bare bones of it, I suppose you'd say. So uh, uh, after the exhibition, what's next for you? Uh, any upcoming projects or themes you're excited to explore? They can share um, with us. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd really like to go back to, I'd really like to explore more of the British Isles uh, with my camera. Um, so you know fingers crossed that that happens i i may try and get over to paris photo so i don't know if, any, if either of you guys or any listeners are at paris photo this year maybe we can meet up um and then it's either it's either in late autumn or early winter i've got another another show uh, in america with the with the gallery in america the the hulet collection which uh is based out of Tulsa in, in Oklahoma. Um, they're putting on an exhibition there of uh, of my work, and I've I've said this to a few people. They don't, sometimes don't know his name, which kind of strikes me as odd because I think he's very famous. But do you know Michael Kenner? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Right. There's a few people I've said the name and they say oh, I don't know who he is. But anyway, uh, <laughs> which kind of strikes me as odd because he seems to be one of the most well known uh, photographers. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> So there's going to be an exhibition in, in Tulsa at the, the Hewlett Collection um, on Cherry Street there um, of my my work alongside Michael Kenner's uh, work. And wow. it, it's specifically his his uh, my Ven Venice work. So okay. it should be it should be. I think it'd be really interesting because well, I think we've got very different ways of yeah. showing things, but it, <laughs> it could work. It could work really well. You know, um, Michael, Michael Hewlett, who's. Uh, Who's the gallery owner over there? He'll, you know, he's uh, he's got years of experience in these things, and he always pulls it off. So it's uh, it'll be fantastic, I'm sure. But I'm very excited about that show, um, and then we'll see. Uh, for, uh, afterwards, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we shall just see. going for another another walk, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just go for another walk. For find find something else, find another place. You know, maybe maybe go back to Porto because it's going to be a great city. Uh, yeah, kind of carry yeah. on working there. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, it's always not looking too far ahead, I suppose, is, is my philosophy. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. I always say this to people. It's good to be lost. You know, it's good yeah. to not know. It's good to not know. It's uh, that's how surprises happen and uh, and uh, the work's made. <laughs> yeah. Being lost to be found. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I. I our podcast, we have a large number of beginner photographs, photographers. Um, do you have any advice for them, for our expiring photographers who are listening to us? They are trying to find their voice. Oh yeah, um, uh, specifically with with darkroom work, or just in general? In general. In general. Um, yeah. Buy a I, good pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and lots good. of film. <laughs> That's it. Keep hydrated. Um, no, it's I, honestly that it it can always seem very daunting, and I I think people often worry about how they're going to um, make a success of something. But I, mm -hmm. I've I've never I've never really worried about that. It's which I I don't know if it's a 
I should say that. I, I don't know if that's a, an encouraging thing, but you, I, I think honestly think if you if you if you work hard and you you work at something and you you really want it to work, it eventually it'll happen. You know, something will happen. Um, similarly, you know, if you've got ideas for shooting a project or whatever, you know, just just keep at it. Um, be the be the strange person who's quite obsessed with something like I am with with marshes. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> find, and I, find your I, obsession right yeah exactly and I, I i think with with subject matter as well you know it's it's the the, the more you know it the, the better the images get um you know uh, people people say the best photos you can take are on your your back your back doorstep which yeah. I, I guess is true to a certain extent yeah. and we all should you know really think about that and pat pat sacked on shooting locally but i I also think as well, you know, if you want to travel to a place, you know, and and exercise your eye and, you know, try and see what you can, you can tease out of it, you know, go for it. Um, just don't, you know, don't, if anyone gives you, you know, uh, if anyone kind of knocks you down, just ignore them. <laughs> Get on with it. <laughs> so let, let me turn this around. So what, what advice would you give yourself when you were beginning? Ah, that my adv- the 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 thing I kept telling myself was um was to go to the dark room every week. That was the oh. it, was, it was like this thing. I I, I said right, I've got, just go. You've got to go. And sometimes I'd go, and I'd use a whole box of paper, and that whole box of paper would end up in the bin. Um, oh. uh, sometimes I'd go, and I'd I'd make the best print I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> uh sometimes you know a mixture in between but it's it, I, I that was the the one thing i i wanted to kind of do was was really to understand the dark room as a you know kind of understand the grammar of it mm-hmm. understand the language um so that then hopefully one day uh i could use it to 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 sort of enhance the work i guess um but other than that, I mean, I I always, uh, you know, I'd always go on walks. Um, I was, uh, yeah, always always went on walks. And if I went on a photo walk, I'd have a camera with me. Um, I think also when I started out, I, I did carry the camera a lot, and I was very worried that if I didn't have it with me, I would miss something. Um, but I think I don't know what it is. If it's uh, uh, intelligence or stupidity or age, <laughs> <laughs> now I kind of, you know, I'm less. I don't worry too much. Uh, huh. I'm more forgiving. If if I miss something, I miss something. And as I say, I, I just uh, tell myself the photography gods owe me a nice photograph. <laughs> <laughs> the light gods. The light gods, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they can be they can be very kind, and they can also be very cruel. <laughs> oh, through. especially in the dark room. Yeah. <laughs> exactly now I, I think for any of your any of your listeners who specifically are interested in the dark room just yeah i mean it, it i say this it, it, you know it's, it sounds very flippant i guess but um just try and make a habit of it um mm. you know if you make a mistake don't don't necessarily throw it away keep it um because actually you might have just discovered something that you'll like further down the line um I, the most important thing you can do in the dark room, and this is serious because I, I didn't do it at the beginning and I'm now kicking myself if I have to make a print from back when I didn't used to take notes <laughs> or oh, make notes when I was yeah. printing. Yeah. Because I, I would make a print and I would say, you know, I'm, I, and I, I used to joke with friends, I'd say, you know, I'm, I'll never have to make that print again. So I don't, you know, that's the, <laughs> that's the only one. But, you know, it's uh, just make notes and, and if not for anything else, just so that you can follow your progress and see how you approach yeah. things and, and what changes. But I mean, the dark room these days, it's, it's one of those things which, uh, you know, it's not easy to get into. It's, they're not easy to find. Lots of them are being turned into other things. Yeah. I think the dark rooms at my, my old university now are two toilets, you know, it's kind of <laughs> what, what a waste, what a waste of a, of a place to create, you know, create work. They've turned it into a toilet. But anyway, that's it's kind of the world over really so if you can find somewhere and you can find people um to share with i i I think all that really helps you know yeah um and as i say it's you know the basics can be taught in in an afternoon but it's then having that kind of 
willingness to uh, to keep at it. Do you th- do you think this 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 will ever turn around? Because you were speaking of the 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 labs closing over time, and it, it just early this morning we were speaking exactly the same thing because we have less and less labs and especially It's... schools that teach it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do you think I this say... will turn around because maybe become a, so. a trend again? I hope so. Um, you know, I, it's quite funny. My some of my friend, my my son's, uh, my children's friends saw a roll of film on the uh. site that maybe I'd exposed or something, and they said, "You know, what's that?" <laughs> you know, and I pulled it. Yeah, you know, and then I've kind of loaded it. I've loaded film in a camera before, and, and the kind of the kids' faces, they're like, "What's he?" Do? I mean, you're talking five, seven year olds, but yeah, they they don't know. You know, um, so I kind of hope it does because I I think at least from a creative point of view you know the, there's a lot to be explored in in the dark room um mm. for, for those who want to do it uh well in, in photography in general you know it doesn't have to be the dark room but uh you kind of hope it's going to come back but i don't know the, the the cost of things goes up and hopefully you know hopefully triex will always exist but i mean a part of me thinks it won't um <laughs> <laughs> But, I you know, know. I, I, I saw some news called X sold the part of uh, Alaris to some group, financial group. So, oh, really? Let's hope everything yeah. gets better. <laughs> I don't know what a roll of trikes costs in Portugal, but here we were paying like 15, 16 pounds, which, what's that in euros? Like 20 euros uh, a roll? Not that much. We're probably, what, 12 to 15 euros, maybe. I'm not yeah. wrong, but. Some will, someone will correct me when this is on the air. Uh, <laughs> so, but, you know, I get probably it, it, around there. HP5, maybe a bit less. But... Yeah. No, I, I, you know, if it was more, if it was more um, kind of available and was used more by people, you know, that it would be great. But I don't know, maybe it's going to change and turn into something which, um, you know, is uh, is more of a, a niche thing. I mean, I yeah. don't get me wrong, but you know what I'm doing, making the work I do and, and making it how I do in the dark room, it's, there's nothing special about it, but uh, it's what's always been done. But I guess these days uh, that, you know, it, it's kind of takes on this, um, this kind of special mm-hmm. kind of, yeah, this, it becomes a special thing because not, it's, it's not so common, you know? Yeah, it, it's not digital. It's not AI created. It's authentic. Yeah, well, exactly. I think AI is a is a whole other. <laughs> that, that's a whole, a whole other discussion. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess when you're sh- when you're when you're shooting film and making work in the, in the dark room, you know, no AI, no AI has been used. <laughs> kind of, For sure. Kind of, kind of built in. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's very interesting. I don't know what the future holds and. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> so, Kit, thank you once again for taking some time to talk with us today. We hope to meet you personally at the opening. Yes, no, I look forward to, to going for previous, a bit. Previous to the opening, we hope we can get together. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I look forward so, to that. Thank you again. We'll say our goodbyes now. <laughs> And thanks so much. Hope to see you really, really soon. Thanks ever so much, guys, for having me. Malta, uh, não se esqueça, se quiserem ver o trabalho do, do, do Kit, podem procurá-lo no Instagram, em kitiang135, ou então até podem ir ao site dele, www.kitiang.co.uk. Uh, esperemos que tenham gostado desta, desta conversa. Relembramos, a exposição do Kit vai estar na Leca Store do Porto a partir de 28 de setembro, 28 de setembro e a workshop será no dia 29 de setembro, também no Porto. Ok? Sim, Portanto, em breve quiserem... eles vão anunciar e vai, uh, 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 vai estar disponível para as inscrições. As inscrições para quem exatamente. Então, inscrições, são inscrições sim. limitadas, portanto, quem esteja interessado, uh, mexa-se e estejam sim. atentos. Ok? Uh, esperemos que tenham gostado desta primeira novidade uh, que nós vos trouxemos desta temporada, uh, desta parceria, que mais uma vez uh, agradecemos à Aleca Portugal. Uh, é possibilitar esta sim. conversa com, com o Kit e se algum de vocês, dos nossos ouvintes vier ao Porto ver a exposição avisem-nos, quem sabe a gente não se possa lá, lá encontrar e trocarmos também algum, algum conhecimento e conhecermos pessoalmente se ainda não fizerem parte da nossa comunidade do Discord, podem fazê-lo basta irem ao nosso Instagram ter lá os links todos na nossa bio ok? ter lá depois no, no link 
está lá o, o, o convite para o Discord. Uhum. Também, obviamente, temos o nosso e-mail da praxe que é arroba. O prova de contacto.podcast.gmail.com. É e o nosso Instagram, prova de contacto podcast, que vocês também podem procurar. Este é o tudo do campeonato, espero que vocês já saibam. É? Já deviam saber de cor. Já, já vamos com sete <risos> temporadas, seis temporadas. Seis, seis, seis. Já estou a pensar muito à frente. Já, já estou a pensar, a pensar na, na próxima. Já estou a pensar então. na sétima. Ainda agora começamos. Por isso, mais uma vez, malta, muito obrigado por estarem desse lado a ouvir-nos. Muito obrigado. E por nos apoiaram, espalharem e espero que apareçam à exposição. Uh, certamente não se vão arrepender. E mais uma vez, muito obrigado por estarem desse lado a ouvir-nos. E até à e... próxima. Até breve. Um abraço, malta.